Welcome back. We are tied right now. Stork against Zergbong. Zergbong using a brilliant Hydra Rush to break Stork's entrance after he fast expanded. Stork's uh, build order not bad, but then again, Zergbong's build order just a little bit better mainly because that build order is very difficult to read. It's hard to say what direction uh, Zerg is going to attack uh, to. Are they going to get the Mass Mutalist? Are they going to go for the Hydralist? Are they going to get uh, maybe a Scourge or two and uh, get some Lurkers and go for the Contain? Um, and wow, uh, Zergbong just predicted um, the way that Stork would respond and did manage to uh, break the entrance. So Stork, the pressure is on him. One of, well, easily one of the best Protoss players of all time. And now, well, I mean, let's put it like this. He got second at the GSI. By the way, check out the BODs if you haven't already. Um, he could lose now to Zergbong. He does now have the potential to lose. This could be the end of Stork. The player that normally does not get eliminated in moments such as these. The final map is Othello. A fantastic map. If you want to download any of these maps, by the way, you can go get them at uh, www.iccup.net. That's also the largest StarCraft ladder in the world. Check it out. All right, I think we're going to get this game underway. Welcome back. Game three, Stork versus Zergbong. A lot of pressure on both of these players. If Stork loses this, it would be a huge, huge upset. Oh, they are possibly the fastest face hiders we've seen here. See them? They're like... They're not very fast. No speed upgrade. Now, is Stork going to fast expand again? Yes, he is. Stork's still confident with his fast expanding build. Fast expanding is probably, well, arguably the best a Protoss for Stork build uh, you can do. If you can get away with fast expanding, you should probably do it. Um, Oh, that's just the way the metagame is going right now. Doesn't mean the Protoss can't win without fast expanding. There are tons of other strategies. Now, will Zerg Bong play the same way or will he mix it up again? Oh, no, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. excuse me. This is not fast expanding. It almost always means they're, they're going to fast expand when they put the pylon on the low ground. This is the other opener you can do where you get two gateways. And you do the double gateway rush, and uh, from there you kind of have a, a nice wall, um, wall off uh, with the gateways. You can put a cannon behind that. It is a little bit riskier than um, fast expanding and getting the forge first, because you are uh, more prone to get killed from a counter attack. Now it looks as though Zergbong is going to go for the spawning pool and the extractor. So, um, this is pretty typical. Also, going to get the hatchery at the ramp. A smart decision. He can make sunk colonies there uh, in case Stork does decide to park two zealots at the ramp and wall his opponent in. Now this is a pretty, um, it's not a bad build, it's just a very dangerous build. Uh, you can lose control of the game very quickly because your gateways are not on high ground. So in other words, uh, you don't have quick access to your main. If Zerglings are attacking your main, you can get hit from multiple angles. And Stork also wants to keep this probe alive. The probe is actually pretty useful um, in the rush. It can deal a little bit of extra damage. You've probably heard me say it before, but two probe hits plus two zealot hits uh, is a dead zergling. 
Otherwise, it's three Zealot hits to kill a Zergling. You can see Zergbong wants to get a surround or at least cut off the other Zealots from reinforcing. And Stork is going to go ahead and just start rushing. Now, how is Zergbong going to respond? He's going to need to get one suck at Colony here. And it looks like he is going to go up the ramp now. Zergbong knows that this rush can be pretty dangerous. The gateways are a little bit closer to your main than normal. Here comes the attack. Is Stork's micro good enough? Oh, wow. I think it may well be, but the Sunken Colony is close to finishing. He's getting enough Zerglings, it seems like, but the Sunk is done. And can he get the Sunken Colony? Oh my god, yes he is! I think this could be game. Stark's control is just so phenomenally good. He's going to regroup. All the Zealots are at least somewhat wounded because uh, they've been micro back and forth. Wow, look unbelievable. And it looks like there's not going to be enough Zerglings. Zergbong has basically lost the game unless, oh, actually, it depends on when that this Sunken Colony gets up, but I do not believe it will. The, sunk, the Creep Colony loses 100 HP when it turns into a Sunk. Yeah, that's that's the yeah. He's not so happy about that. But um, yeah, there's not much he can do. He's gonna have the forge there too, so he can make cannons to defend from a counterattack. Not like a counterattack is possible. Zergbong only has about seven or eight drones. All Stork has to do is just. Well, it looks like Zergling Speed's done. That's a little bit helpful, but really, there's just too many uh, Zealots coming in here. And as you can see, Stork's Micro is just too good. GG. Stork moves on. It was close, but in the end, he was confident enough with that strategy. Uh, he pulled through. Well done. Stork, he will be going to the final 16. We have one more game here today. That will be Berserker versus Stats. A brief recap of that last game that we saw, though. Stork um, put the gateways on low ground. Uh, not a very common build order. Uh, rushed with that and also had the gateways positioned in such a way that he could defend. Um, if, he, if it failed, he could then go for the fast expand. Very exciting games here, though, I gotta say. Today's games have just been excellent. Check out the rest if you haven't seen them already. We haven't had a bad series yet here.